Welcome to another Excel tutorial video. This video is going to look at the if function. Now, ifs can be quite simple. They can be incredibly complex. And we're going to have a look at different levels of that complexity in this video. So I've got three examples. The first one is quite simple. The next one is a little bit more complicated. And the third one is a lot more complicated. So when you are doing an if statement, you've got three different things to include in the function. I'm just going to type equals if in an open bracket. Once I do that, the uh, screen tips pop up and tell me what it's expecting me to enter. So the first thing it wants to know is a logical test. So a logical test means the answer is either true or false. So the logical test might be if cell B1 is greater than 10. It might be if cell B1 uh, contains the text hello, for example. So logical tests, either a true or false answer. Now if it is a true answer, what do you want the function to return? Do you want it to return a number? Do you want it to return a blank? Do you want it to return a word? Do you want it to do some particular equation, etc.? So that's what you do in the second variable, and the third variable is, is what happens if it's not true. So um, three things to put into every if equation, and uh, so let's have a look at the first example. Um, really easy, like I mentioned, I've got numbers from 1 to 10, and what I'm going to do is simply type equals if, click on that cell, I'm not going to do any... Um, locking of that reference. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to say if it is greater than 5, then put the word pass, otherwise put the word fail. So anytime I want a function to return a text value, I have to put it inside quotes, otherwise Excel won't know what to do and it'll come up with an error. So if I hit enter, it's going to put the word fail in there. So I just want to go back into the equation and just select that logical test part. And on my PC keyboard, I'm just going to hit the F9 value. And as we can see there, it's evaluating for us saying it's false. And that means that it's going to put the third variable, the fail variable rather than the second variable which is pass. Hit control Z to go back to my function. So I'm just going to copy this down and what we'll see is at the halfway mark it switches over to passing instead of failing which is what we wanted. So this one here is true. very simple if equation logical criteria followed by something if it's true and something if it's false now here's something that's a little bit more interesting and, and complicated to, to really test the, the knowledge on here what I've got is um, a score line and as you would have experienced with Excel um, it tries to think for you and so for example I want to put in a score line that was 2-1 loss to the home team which I would denote 1-2 now as soon as I hit enter Excel is going to say hang on a minute this is a date and it turns it into the 1st of February now that's the last thing that I want so I typically convert these things to text and this time when I put it in, it aligns to the left-hand edge of the cell, which means it's text, and it, it leaves it as I've entered it in 1-2. However, it causes a few problems when you are starting to um, work with functions and so on. You have to be pretty good with some of the text formulas. Now, I've done a video on that if you wanted to look through some of my previous ones. Text functions are a really good thing to be familiar with. So I've, I've written it out here just to the right so you can have a look at it if you are um, not particularly good at some of these text functions. But what I'm going to do is say... equal sign in. So 
So if the left single character, now I'm assuming that um, I've put in some fairly decent football teams in here, um, that in my memory, I don't ever remember there being a, a 10 goal either side uh, result. So I'm just assuming that it's always just going to be one character. So either a zero or at most a nine. So what I'm saying is that if the number on the left, which is the home team score, is greater than a number in the middle, because my formula uh, starts overlapping onto the score, I have to start in a cell below and use the arrow keys to go up, which uh, is definitely a good tip to know. So what I know is that there's just going to be one, one uh, character at the beginning, then a dash, and then the second score. So I know that I need to look at 3 and 1, which basically means the mid equation finds the starting from the third character and bringing in one character in the middle of a text string. So I'll just select that up in the function window and press F9 and we can see that it pulls up a zero. And so what I've said is that if F9, one on the left, which is the first team score, is greater than the second team score, then what do I want to do? I want to say win. Otherwise, I want to say loss. Now, if you just excuse me for a second, taking a little bit of liberty here, uh, if I pull that down, aside from some horrible formatting that I've put in there, um, you can see it, it correctly pulls out um, all the wins and everything else comes up as a loss. Now, that's not correct, obviously, because there are some draws in there, the first one being against uh, the mighty Dutch team, Breda. Now, um, we would need to do an extra if equation inside the first if equation it's called a nested if equation to make that recognize both the second one so up here in the variable value if false we want to start our next if equation so firstly it goes through and says if the first team score is greater than the second team score then that's a win Otherwise, if, now I'm just going to copy this whole thing because it saves a lot of time. I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to turn that symbol around. Because I now know that that will be a loss. Otherwise, Now, because I've got two if equations inside each other, I have to close them both off. So always good to watch the tool tips to make sure you've hidden enough brackets. Sometimes you get pretty gnarly formulas that have a whole lot of brackets. So if I now copy that down, let's see how it goes. So it picks up the draws as well. So what we've got is the first if equation there that says what to do if it's the first team score is greater than the second team score. The next part here says what to do if the second team score is greater than the first team score. And then if it's not one of those two, we know that it's going to be a draw. Now the problem that we have got is that this particular game here was postponed. Obviously that's a little bit unrealistic in this day and age, it doesn't really happen. But uh, um, occasionally you do get a, a postponement and you're trying to fill in a, uh, a spreadsheet that's doing some calculations for you. So um, what I've often found uh, is an answer is to put an error, if error in front 
which is kind of like an if equation that's now a built-in function into Excel. So you can do things that allow you to um, get over things, uh, little barriers and so on along the way. What we've just done hasn't actually solved our problem, it's still showing up as a loss here. So what we could potentially do is be a little bit tricky. <coughs> so right at the beginning I'm going to put another if equation and I'm going to use another text function Now len calculates the number of characters in a cell. So what I'm going to say is that if the length of F16 is equal to 3, then you can continue with the formula. Otherwise, leave it blank. Now, if I've done this correctly, it's going to leave this blank. There we go. And if I drag it up, it should leave everything else untouched because they've all got um, results with a length of four, of, of three. Sorry. So I'm just going to test this by putting uh, a one in there, and that's good. It takes the error away. So a little bit of a complicated if equation. In this case the complicated part was in the criteria. We had to do some text functions to go into the criteria but it does illustrate that you can have some fairly complicated things going on inside any of the variables of an if equation. And what we're going to see is an extension of that in the next example. We've got um, two teams. I've only got four players in each team at the moment but uh, it serves for our example. So what I need to do is I need to find out whether their fitness test result is better, equal to, or better than the standard that's been set for those particular players. Now that standard is dependent on which team they're in. So it has to find out which team John's in, and then once it knows which team John is in, it needs to look in the correct column to pull out what the standard is. So the first thing I want to do is use uh, an equation called match, Just going to lock that. And so what match will do is give us the position in a list that our particular cell, in this case A24, is found in. So if I get a 1 now and I drag this down, what I'll find is that I get some errors because those particular people aren't in the list and I get some numbers for the others. Basically it's saying that this person Joe is second on the list, this person Chris is third on the list, and this person Ben is fourth on the list. So that's good. That's a good start. Now what I would prefer, I need to have a true or a false. So I could say is number. And now we're getting somewhere. So we need to know, uh, we need to have a, a trigger, a, a, a Boolean logic, true or false, that helps us determine uh, which part of an if equation to then progress to. So I'm going to start filling this in now. If is number match A24 in that table there is equal to true, then what do I want to do? I want to... Look up this cell in this table and lock that down. And pull up whatever is in column two because that is the Olympic team standards. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm just going to drag this down. So what we'll find is that we have hopefully correctly pulled through all the standards for the players in the Olympic squad. And that looks pretty good to me. 
So that's the true part of the if equation. We need to do the false part now. And I'm just going to copy this entire thing. So if that's not the case, if this person's name isn't found in the Olympic team list, then we want to go to the next question and find out whether it's found in the development team list. So is A24 in the development team list or not? If it is, then look up B24, the same table, but the answer will be in column 3 this time. Just put a if at the beginning here. That's better. I'm just going to put some text here. Just in case we get an error. So what I've got, if I drag this down, is hopefully I've pulled through the correct standard, depending on this is our criteria, whether the person's name is correct, is found in one of these two teams, then once it knows that, it's, it's using a VLOOKUP to find the particular column. And so now I can do equals if, something pretty simple really, just a revision of example one, if that is greater than or equal to the standard, then Something simple like that. So there we go. Really what I wanted to illustrate is that an if equation here can have a whole bunch of things inside it. In this case, we've got a fairly complicated criteria um, to give us a true or a false. Once we've got a, a true, it then has got a VLOOKUP as our answer. It then wants to say, well, okay, if it's not in the first list, it might be in the second list. And if it's not in either list, it comes up with no match. So I'm just going to test that. Okay, there we go. So it comes up no match. <clears throat> now we could edit this outcome equation so that this particular one also said no match, for example. But uh, I think you get the point in and uh, don't need me to go through that. So there we go. If equations... Um, if you can get your head around them, it will solve a lot of your problems. Um, nesting if equations in particular by putting um, another if equation or another function inside it really starts getting you into some good ground. So uh, give it a try. Look at some other if videos on YouTube and see if you get some other ideas. But uh, feel free to drop me a line or send me some comments. Cheers.